हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द चैनल इग्नू डी एन एच ई ऑनलाइन क्लासेस माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर आयुषी वी आर स्टार्टिंग डी एन एच ई वन एंड वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड एट यूनिट्स एंड नाउ लेट स्टार्ट विथ यूनिट नाइन मील प्लानिंग फॉर इन्फेंट एंड प्री स्कूलर्स टूडेज टॉपिक्स आर इंट्रोडक्शन इन्फेंट आर डी ए एंड मील प्लानिंग फॉर इन्फेंट प्री स्कूल चाइल्ड आर डी ए एंड मील प्लानिंग फॉर प्री स्कूल चाइल्ड एंड एट लास्ट वी विल सी क्वेश्चन फ्राम दिस यूनिट इंट्रोडक्शन एसेंशियल फीचर्स ऑफ लाइफ आर ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट बट द पैटर्न ऑफ ग्रोथ इज नॉट यूनिफॉर्म लाइफ बिगिनस विद सिंगल सेल then divides and multiplies into hundreds and thousands of cells to form fetus the first year of life is called the period of infancy and the period from 1 to 6 years is referred to as as the preschool year infancy and preschool period together are important in child's life as they form the foundation for the future health of child the changes in pattern of growth influence the nutrient needs we need to combine foods into a diet that would help to meet the nutritional needs of children and at the same time be appealing and appetizing infant who is an infant the child in first year is referred to as an infant this first year of life is a period of intense growth and development that is physical increase in the size of the body the infant at birth weighs about 2.5 to 3 kg and measures 50 cm in length with rapid growth taking place the infant doubles its birth weight in 5 months and by 1 year the weight is 3 times the birth weight that is about 9 kg and length is 75 cm gain in weight and increase in length are best indicators to assess the child's growth weighing the child every month for the first year would give a good idea of the pattern of growth the gain in height and weight are accompanied by changes in tissues organs and skeletal systems of the body during first year like the muscle grow in size and strength bones lengthens the brain kidneys and digestive system improve their functional capacity the body undergoes a process of development for example the development of digestive system enables the infant to handle more complex food items starting from breast milk at birth to solid food by the end of the first year infancy is a period of extremely fast rate of growth and development if enough food is not provided to the infant he or she would be more prone to infections and diseases resulting in ill health next is rda for the infant in this table you will notice that rdas are given in two categories that is 0 to 6 months and 6 to 12 months this is because the age of infant influences nutrient need during first 6 months speed growth takes place which necessitates a high nutrient intake the requirements given in table for 0 to 6 months are basically guidelines for feeding infants who by some reason cannot receive breast milk rdas for energy protein iron and b vitamins are given in terms of per kg body weight because the needs for these nutrients per kg body weight are substantially different within the specific age category 
the total amount of nutrients required by the infant may seem much smaller as compared to the adult but when expressed in terms of per kg body weight the need is over twice as much for most nutrients rda for protein and certain protective nutrients like calcium iron vitamin c and vitamin a are also high because the tissue growth and body building activity is considerable during the first year which require high intake of protein and vitamin a for bones and skeletal system development calcium is required the blood volume increases and iron is required for the synthesis of hemoglobin in the blood cells next is meal planning for infant the first food normally given an infant is breast milk which supplies all the nutrients needed by the baby for the first few months but after 4 to 6 months breast milk alone is not sufficient to meet the growing needs of the infant certain other foods needed to be provided along with breast milk as to supplement the shortfall in the nutrients the process of introducing foods other than breast milk in the diet of the infant is called complementary feeding complementary feeding is a gradual process which begins from the moment other foods like semi solid or solid food preparations are started and continues till the time the child is completely taken off the breast any food other than breast milk given to the infant is referred to as complementary food the basic four focal points for meal planning are nutritional adequacy availability acceptability and income next is whom are we planning for what is the stage of infancy either it is 0 to 4 months 4 to 6 months 6 to 8 months or 9 to 12 months what is the expected body weight of the infant at that particular age and what is the income level of the family to which the infant belongs to and last one is where does the infant live that is the region next is which are the nutrients of particular importance there are always some nutrients which are important for particular age group we discussed for adulthood pregnancy and lactation period let's see the nutrients which are needed during infancy these are energy giving nutrients that is carbohydrates and fats proteins calcium vitamin a and vitamin c next is which foods to select during first 6 months after birth breast milk alone provides most of the nutrients required by the baby thereafter in addition to breast milk one should introduce complementary or supplementary foods importance of breast milk breast milk is the best and the only food for the infant for the first few months after birth it contains most of the nutrients the baby needs but before milk is secreted colostrum is produced by the breast during first few days after childbirth a thick sticky yellowish fluid is secreted from the breast called as colostrum it is very beneficial for the infant as it has life saving properties colostrum has an especially high concentration of antibodies and wbcs which protect the newborn from infections it also contains certain growth promoting substances the infant's body does not contain these substances nor does the body have the capacity to make them so 
these substances must be obtained from colostrum hence it is essential that the infant is breastfed right from the day 1 breast milk is secreted from third or the fourth day onwards it is the most nutritious and balanced food it supplies most of the nutrients needed by the infant that too in the correct amounts and proportions now the question arises that when to introduce complementary foods or what is the right time for complementary feeding the right time to start with complementary food is 6 months if you start too early there is a risk of diarrhea and if you start too late there is risk of malnutrition hence introduce complementary foods only around 6 months but continue breastfeeding next is what kind of complementary foods should be given in general based on the age of the infant one could vary the texture and consistency of the complementary foods these supplements are divided into two categories that is semi solid supplements and solid supplements semi solid supplements are well cooked and mashed food which is given to infant of 6 to 8 months and solid supplements are chopped or lumpy food which is given to infant of 8 to 12 months let's see semi solid supplements first the first solid food commonly offered around 6 months is a soft thin liquidy porridge made from the staple food of the community the porridge can be prepared by cooking the cereals like wheat or rice with milk and sugar such a preparation is called the basic mix that is when protein rich food is added to a cereal you will find some common examples of basic mix with the method of preparation which is given in annexure 3 at the end of the block other than the porridge starchy fruits and vegetables which are cooked well and mashed can be given around 6 months root and tubers and vegetables like potatoes sweet potatoes carrots green leafy vegetables are boiled in minimum water till tender and then mashed properly this mashed vegetable can be fed as such or with little salt and ghee or butter could be added to provide more energy remember only the pulp of vegetable is to be given the skin seeds and other fibrous matter should be discarded fruits like banana papaya mango and other seasonal fruits can be mashed and given as such other fruits like pineapple and peaches are first stewed that is boiled in a little water and sugar till tender and then mashed before being served remember to discard skin and seeds of the fruits before serving other supplements which could be given includes yolk of hard boiled egg finely finely minced and cooked meat mashed fish well cooked and mashed dals salt can be added to taste and small amount of fat that is butter can also be added to provide more energy along with all these complementary food breast feeding should be continued second is solid supplements by 8 months the baby starts teething this is the right time to change him over to chopped and lumpy foods the foods which were boiled and mashed earlier should be now just boiled and cut into small pieces before being served like potatoes and carrots could be boiled and cut into small pieces soft cooked rice or small pieces of chapat chapatis may also be introduced at this stage as the infant is teething 
it is beneficial to give more crunchy foods like hard biscuit or a piece of toast or rusk or a slice of raw carrot or a fruit segment which would be ideal for the child to chew these foods would also aid in teething and provide exercise to the gums in addition to this thick porridges can be prepared and served to the infant basic mix was prepared by adding milk and sugar to cereal porridges now other than milk foods like pulses animal foods green leafy vegetables other vegetables can also be added to the staple to form a multi mix when cereal is added with protein source plus vitamin or mineral source is called a multi mix here are few examples like multi mixes can be prepared by mixing the following food items cereals can be added with pulse and green leafy vegetables or cereals can be added with pulse vegetables and curd and more such combinations can be prepared multi mixes can be introduced as early as 6 to 7 months of age by the age of 1 year the baby can take all solid foods in fact the infant should be eating food prepared for the family like rice and dal chapati and dal rice and fish chapati and sabji attempts should be made to get the infant slowly to the family meal pattern along with these foods breastfeeding should be continued but in case if breast milk has ceased then the child can be given half a liter of animal milk per day along with complementary foods one should provide plenty of water or fluids to the infant what should be meal pattern the type and quality of food given would depend on the age of infant any of the following meal patterns can be followed from birth to fourth month only breast milk is to be given feeding should be done on a self demand roughly 6 to 8 feeds can be given during the first few months which can be reduced slowly by the age of 6 months babies should be given some staple based porridge about twice a day start with 1 to 2 teaspoonful followed by about 3 to 6 large spoonful at each feed subsequently by 9 months at least 4 to 5 supplements in addition to the regular breast feeding should be given the frequency of breast feeding should be gradually reduced by the time the child is 12 to 18 months attempts should be made to take the baby off the breast by 1 year the child is capable of eating and digesting a variety of foods and is able to eat family food but the child may not be able to eat much at one time on the other hand the child's energy needs are greater than is indicated by its size so the problem is how to provide enough energy food to the child the answer is feed the child frequently 5 to 6 times a day in addition to breast milk second is enrich the child's food with a little oil or fat simple tips on infant feeding are listed in points to remember in book so go through those points as well next is the preschool child who is a preschool child we will consider a child in the age group 1 to 6 years as a preschool child a preschooler grows rapidly but when compared to infancy 
द रेट ऑफ ग्रोथ इज समॉट स्लोअर एंड ग्रेजुअल द एवरेज गेन इन वेट ड्यूरिंग द प्री स्कूल एज इज अबाउट टू 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 पॉइंट फाइव के जी ईच ईयर एस कैन बी सीन कंपेरेटिवली मोर इन हाइट देन इन वेट बाय थ्री ईयर्स द चाइल्ड इज अबाउट नाइन्टी फाइव सेंटीमीटर टॉल एंड बाय फोर ईयर्स अबाउट हंड्रेड एंड थ्री सेंटीमीटर टॉल बिकॉज ऑफ दिस द चाइल्ड गिवस एन अपियरेंस ऑफ बींग टॉल एंड थिन एज कंपेयर टू द राउंड एंड चबी अपियरेंस कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ इन्फेंसी अनादर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर ऑफ द प्री स्कूल चाइल्ड इज द इनक्रीज्ड फिजिकल एक्टिविटी द चाइल्ड बिकम्स इंडिपेंडेंट एस्पेशली इन टर्म्स ऑफ गेनिंग कंट्रोल ओवर द बॉडी द इनक्रीज फिजिकल एक्टिविटी एंड ग्रोथ टेकिंग प्लेस ड्यूरिंग द प्री स्कूल स्टेज नेसेसिटेट्स अ हायर इनटेक ऑफ न्यूट्रियस रेगुलर वेट गेन इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट साइन ऑफ द चाइल्ड्स ओवरऑल हेल्थ एंड न्यूट्रिशनल स्टेटस इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट ड्यूरिंग द अर्ली ईयर्स ऑफ चाइल्डहुड दैट इज जीरो टू सिक्स ईयर्स द कैचअप ग्रोथ इज पॉसिबल Let's understand this by taking an example. A case of growth failure. That is a child whose height and weight is considerably lower as compared to other children of his age. Now, if during infancy and preschool years, right inputs that is good diet, clean and safe hygienic living conditions are provided, it will be possible for the child to make up for the earlier deficit in growth and development this is catch up that is the child can be brought back to normal therefore preschool period is very crucial next is rda for the preschool child the preschool years represent age from 1 to 6 years at any given age the nutrient need would vary depending on the level of growth and physical activity this is the reason why the nutrient need of the preschool child is given under two categories that is 1 to 3 years and 4 to 6 years the total energy requirement of the preschooler increases with age the requirement for other nutrients is also high but the need for a few nutrients like protein calcium vitamin a and iron is the most this is because these nutrients support the growth and development of the body a preschool child is more prone to infections and diseases hence protective nutrients especially vitamin a and iron are particularly important the diet of the preschool child must provide sufficient amount of these nutrients next is meal planning for the preschool child the preschool years are the time to establish good eating habits in children his food habits are also influenced by the people around him therefore providing an adequate diet for the child is a challenging task meal planning begins by taking basic four factors into consideration that is nutritional adequacy availability acceptability and income i hope you would have memorized these points next is whom are we planning for age group of child is between 1 to 3 years or 4 to 6 years what is the income of the family to which the child belongs which region does this child belong to which are the nutrients of particular importance these are those nutrients which are crucial for the growth and development of a preschool child these are energy giving nutrients that is carbohydrates and fats protein for body building calcium for bone and teeth growth and development iron and vitamin a 
विच फूड्स टू सिलेक्ट डाइट मस्ट इंक्लूड एटलीस्ट वन फूड आइटम फ्रॉम ईच ऑफ द थ्री फूड ग्रुप्स नीड फॉर एनर्जी प्रोटीन कैल्शियम आयन एंड विटामिन ए इज हाई ड्यूरिंग प्री स्कूल एज यू विल फाइंड द लिस्ट ऑफ फूड आइटम्स इन एन एक्शर वन यू कैन कंसल्ट इट एंड सिलेक्ट द फूड आइटम्स अकॉर्डिंग टू लाइक्स एंड डिसलाइक्स ऑफ द चाइल्ड एंड अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ फूड आइटम नेक्स्ट इज वॉट शुड बी द मील पैटर्न अ रेगुलर मील पैटर्न शुड बी मेनटेन्ड टू लॉन्ग और टू शॉर्ट इंटरवल बिटवीन सक्सेसिव मील्स शुड बी अवॉइडेड गिव स्मॉल एंड फ्रीक्वेंट मील्स अ प्री स्कूल चाइल्ड would benefit from three small meals plus two to three snacks in between the meals per day the meal pattern adopted would actually depend on the age of the child these are two patterns follow according to the age of the child group a is likely to be adopted for a one and a half year old child the child needs to be given food every 3 to 4 hours at least 2 to 3 milk feeds should be given in addition foods of high protein and energy content should be given 4 to 5 times a day group b is likely to be adopted for a 3 to 5 years old child in addition to 2 milk feeds and 3 main meals other nutritious foods and snacks or food preparations should be served in between meals next is what are the food preparations or snacks suitable for the preschool child snack can be prepared on the basis of common locally available cereals and pulses snacks should be provide about 300 to 400 calories snacks should provide high energy protein calcium or vitamin a snacks should supplement and not substitute the main meals these are to be served between the main meals that is breakfast lunch and dinner it should be easy to prepare and should be in a form which can be easily handled by the child a few ideas for snacks for preschool child are given in annex 5 Next is what are the other specific considerations this is very important for a preschool child firstly it should be kept in mind that the meal time for children should be relaxing and enjoyable children of this age learn to enjoy food then they are allowed to feed themselves food should be cut into bite sized pieces that can be readily handled and lifted to the mouth children like foods that can be eaten with the fingers second is when introducing new foods to the child offer one at a time whenever giving a new food item firstly give only small amount let the child decide that is he liking or not don't make an issue that he is not accepting a particular food and even do not force the child to eat it if the food is rejected wait for a few weeks and then try again next is children of preschool age develop very strong likes and dislikes for certain foods they may even not like and avoid essential foods the common examples are milk and green leafy vegetables these are usually disliked by children so here in this situation mothers should think innovatively she should change the form of food and then serve it to the child rather than totally omit it from the diet fewer difficulties are likely to be encountered if foods which are disliked by child are given when the child is hungry children are easily influenced by the parents attitudes towards food parents should be extra careful of not to express their likes and dislikes in front of children rather 
they should eat a variety of food and encourage the child to do the same food served to children should be warm and not too hot or too cold children usually have a very high taste sensitivity they do not enjoy highly flavored foods only mildly flavored foods should be included in the diet the digestive tract of the preschool child is easily irritated by spicy food very sweet or fried foods such foods should be avoided consuming excessive amounts of fibrous food also irritates the tender digestive tract therefore it is as advisable to use a minimum of fiber rich foods for preschool children preschool children are almost constantly active it is essential to prepare meals that look colorful attractive and catch the attention of the child and motivate them to eat breakfast plays a very important role in this age so make sure that child eats a good breakfast breakfast should supply up to 1/3 of the day's energy requirement this helps in increasing physical and mental efficiency of the child with this we have completed unit 9 i hope you would have understood the topic well these are questions from the first part of the unit that is the infant and these are from second part of this unit that is preschool child go through these and also see the questions given in check your progress exercises given in between the chapters these are important from exam point of view and their answers are also available at the end of the unit in next video we will start with unit 10 meal planning for the school child and adolescent